Good morning, everybody. This is Karen. I was asked to recreate a cutting file that resembles this one with the letter K and the name Kylie. So I'm going to show you what I would do to do that. Um, first thing I would do is create a large circle. Uh, I also wanted to mention that you should have your grid displayed. If you don't have it displayed, click on the right over here, top right, and then click show grid. You can change the color of your grid to be whatever you want it to be. Um, I like to keep it kind of light because it's easier for me to see what I'm doing when it's lighter. And I like it to be in this kind of a shade. Maybe a little bit brighter there. Nope, maybe a little bit darker actually. There we go. It goes match. It matches the frame of my silhouette screen. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a circle, a perfect circle. And to do that, I need to hold down my shift key after clicking the ellipse tool. And then drag out my circle. And I want to make it large enough because my initial and name are going to go inside of that. I'm going to center the circle to the center of the page. And then I'm going to use the offset tool, which is up on the right over here. Create an offset, but I don't want it quite as wide as that. I want it kind of narrow. And then I will choose both of these items and make a compound path. Then I'm going to make sure that they're still centered to the center of the page. I'm going to draw a small circle. And this could be a perfect circle or not necessarily. And I'm going to drag that to the top of my ring. And I'm going to do my best to center it in the middle of those two grid lines and overlap into the rings. When you have an object, you will always have this reference point in the middle. And to be able to replicate this small circle all the way around the large circle, you need to drag the reference point down and be as close to the middle of the page or the middle of the shape as possible. And that's why I centered the shape so that you'd know where the center of your page is. And that's right here. And the crosshairs help you figure that out. If you don't know how to set the crosshairs, again, go to the grid icon, click the grid icon over here and click crosshairs down here. So back to my circle, I have now dragged the reference point down. I'm going to click the replicate window up at the top right. And I need to go into advanced options. I've already determined that I need 60 copies and I'm going to use a degree of six to do my replication. And once I click replicate, it goes around. And you're going to notice that at the top over here, it is nicely overlapped, but at the bottom it isn't. So I need to redo that. What that means is that this is dragged down too far. And you can see if we zoom in, you're going to see it's down too far. So if you want to have better luck at determining the exact center of the page, zoom in and do that. So there we go. We'll zoom back out and we'll do that again. Replicate. And now you'll see that it's overlapped the same distance from the top and all the way around. They're all overlapped and the actual circles overlap each other. So that will give me a nice scalloped shape. And I see that there's one too many here. I could have just chosen 59. You see that this circle is darker red. So you know that there are two of them there. So I'll just click it and delete one of them. And then I'm going to select everything and weld. And the weld will only work if you created a compound path of your ring to start with. So now we've welded and you're going to see there's, a, there's those little bits there. Those are kind of annoying, but they're kind of hard to avoid too. So what we're going to do to get rid of them is we're going to release the compound path. And then I'm going to select the outer ring press shift and select the inner ring. So I have those two selected and I'll move those out of the way. And then I'm just going to drag around all of these items and delete them. 
then before I move these, I'm going to select both of them again. I could have grouped them so that I don't, actually I'm going to do that right now. I'll select the two and group them so that when I move them, they'll move together. And I'm going to center that to the page so that I know that it's centered. Now I'm going to fill this with, uh, I need to create a compound path before I fill it with color. I'm going to show you why you need a compound path. If I just fill this with color now, everything will be colored in. If I create a compound path, then what that does is it creates the hole in the middle. It lets you see where the holes are. And this is only on screen because if you display your cutting lines, let's go back and display the, okay, I better change this to another color so that we'll be able to see the cutting lines. You can see them now, actually. Um, when you cut out your material, this center part here will cut out because you've got a cutting line here. Let's look at this closely and you'll see wherever it's dark or bright red, you have a cutting line. I'm going to go back and change this back to red and create my compound path so that I have this in the middle. Now I need to create a second ring. So I'm going to, again, hold down shift to create my circle. Whoa, that didn't turn out right. I guess I let go of shift too soon. Try that again. Hold shift, drag out the circle, let it go, and then let go of the shift key. And that's not going to be large enough. Oh, actually, it is maybe even a little bit larger than I wanted. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to center that to the page. And I'm going to create, use the offset function again, but in this case, I'm going to use internal offset so that the line created is on the inside of where I was. And I'm going to just make that a little bit wider. And I'm going to also create a compound path of that. And I'm going to fill that with color. Oops need to select it to fill it with color. Then what did we have? We had the initials, the initial and the name. So we're told that the initial is done with the Chopin script font. And I did go and retrieve that and I installed it on my system. I'm going to show you how to do that. To find it, just type Chopin script font into your Google search window. I found it on the font and I like using that site because I know I'm not going to have any problems with strange downloads. And then all you do is click the download button over here, save it where you want it on your computer. The last place I saved was into my fonts folder. So that's where it's going automatically. And I've already got it there, so I won't do that. Once you do save it, find your file, double click it because it is a zipped file and it will extract the font file for you. It's an OTF file. Once that's done, double click the OTF file to install it on your system. If you had Silhouette Studio already running, you'll have to restart it because the font won't be recognized unless you restart Silhouette Studio. If you didn't have it started already, then just start it up now and it will be there for you to see. Oops, I'm going to cancel this because I've already got it. Back to Silhouette Studio. I'm going to click my text icon on the left and I'm going to type the letter K because we're going to do Kylie in the same way as was done in the example. So to change that letter, I'm going to start typing C H O P I N until I find Chopin script. And now you see that that has changed the font over here. Now if I click away, I can click again and make it larger and then bring that into my middle. It's not large enough yet. And let's see how that looks. So going back to the sample that we've got on the screen here, the K is this size in the middle of the circles. And that's looking about the same. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is centered. 
but I don't like the way that looks when it's centered. It looks much like it's much higher to the top. So I'm going to bring that down because fonts are going to be centered based on all of your lines in the font. But you have a much heavier, heavier looking area in the middle here than on the outer parts of the font. So it's better if you drag that so that it looks nice to you. Next thing I need to do then is work on the name Kylie. And this is done with the, whoops, need to see more, the monotype course of a font, which is a font that's installed on your system by default. So again, I'm going to click my text icon and I'm going to type the name Kylie to change the font. I'm just going to start to type monotype here. It finds it and I'm going to click that. I should have selected my text so that it would change it. So I'll do that again and it's changed. I'm not going to keep it red because it won't show very well next to the K. I'm going to change the color of this to, let's make it a blue. That's a blue outline and then I'll make a blue fill as well. And I want it somewhat larger. And then we'll bring it over here. Let's see how large it was here. It stayed within the center, but it was quite a bit larger. And you don't have to follow exactly the same thing that was done by someone else. You can make it go beyond the boundaries of the circle if you like. You can make it stay within. That actually sort of hides the K in the middle. So I would like it a little bit smaller as well. And that might also be because of the color I'm using here. Let's try another color for the K. The white isn't going to show very well because of my white background. Uh, let's see what color would be good to try. Let's try this pink. Maybe it should be a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to try to center it to the page, but again, that may not work out very well. well in this case, it looks good. Or maybe it could come down a little bit. There. And that's it. We've recreated the entire thing. You know what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to make these black and that will show the rest better. There. And I'll also make those lines black. <clears throat> Excuse me. There. And then with this being pink, it shows better. There we go. That's it recreated and it's very simple to do. And then when you want to cut it out, what you do is you pull this away. You cut out, oh, this should have been black lines. There we go. Looks better. So what you do is you take all of this and you cut it in one go. Or if you wanted to, you could take the different parts and make sure they're on your mat in the right places so that they do cut out. You could move it up a bit so it's not taking up the entire, but you're going to have, depending on the size that you make this, and you can decide that this ends up being a little bit bigger than you want. So just group everything and make it smaller. And you could have done that with the name inside. Let's go back a couple of steps and do that because you do want it all to be proportional. So I'll bring the name back in. There we go. Then we'll group everything just for the sake of resizing it. We'll regroup, we'll resize that because we decided we didn't want it quite as big as that. And then to move the Kylie out of the way, ungroup it, click away and then move Kylie out of the way. And we've now got this part that we can group and move up to the corner. And then you're not using up all of this vinyl over here. You could even put some the other color of vinyl on your mat if you're using a mat and cut everything in one pass. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching.